You can't go wrong on it. Well, it'll probably go up uh, 25 points in 24 hours. You bet your life I know what I'm talking about. Well, um, 35 points in 22 hours. <laughs> Keep quiet. <laughs> there, there, pardon, pardon me, I was talking to you. <laughs> Will you cut it out? I'm trying to get rid of that block of BK oil. Okay. No, BK, BK. Uh, pa pa pardon me, uh, what man? You'll thank me to your dying day. How many? 1,500 shares? 1,500. Mm-hmm. All right, fine. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're happy. You bet. Goodbye. There. I've been trying to hook that fellow for two years. Boy, I wish <laughs> I had your talent for lying. So, well, what do you mean, my talent for lying? Why, you lie every time you open your mouth. Why, uh... How, how do you mean? 35 points in 22 hours. Oh, oh, oh. oh, well, if you call that lying, that's part of our game. Yeah, brother, you're going to need your talent if you intend to unload E.M.'s quicksilver stock. What? Does he expect me to peddle that out? Why, he figures it has a great future. Well, you can't figure on the future. Three weeks before I was born, my name was Lillian. <laughs> <laughs> Be right in, Governor. Tell J.P. Clark to call me up as soon as he comes in. Yes, J.P. Clark. All right. Oh, yeah. Why haven't you sold any of my quicksilver stock? Well, there's no call for it, Governor. Oh. And what's your alibi? I, um... I am... Um, I'm, I'm waiting to find out what you're going to do with that property. To find out what I'm going to do with the property. To tell you the truth, E.M., I haven't the heart to peddle that quicksilver out to any of our clients as it stands. Oh, so that's the way you feel about it, eh? Well, now get this. I personally have $100,000 sunk in that mine, and I've got to get it out. Quicksilver is a very valuable commodity. Governor, this quicksilver, what is it used for? Well, in this case, it was used to borrow $100,000 on it. You're a smart little fellow, aren't you? My mother thinks I am. You wouldn't want to buy any of this stock yourself, would you? Oh, I, I don't want to change my mother's opinion. Just a smart little fellow, eh? Just a smart little fellow. <laughs> I told him what I think of Quicksilver anyway. Well, if you didn't tend to marry, E.M.'s daughter, you better not cross him so much. Well, by the way, when do you think of getting married? Constantly. Now tell me, what are these whippet races like? Are they interesting? Oh, yes. The whippet oh. race is the villain. Hello, Hello Gwen. How are you? Fine. Hello, Bendick. How are you, Mr. Bennett? Thanks for that tip on B.K. Oh, not at all. Not at all. I was only too glad to take you in. What about a little bridge after lunch, Gwen? Oh, I just happened to think Mr. Burke wants to see you, and it's very important. Uh huh? No, he's in the barbershop down uh, uh, on the third floor. Ah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you after lunch. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh. You're lovely, you're lovely. Oh, I'm so glad Daddy's in the barbershop. Oh, well, Daddy's not in the barber shop. What? I just said that to get rid of Van Dyke. Oh, you storyteller. I know it. Suppose Dad should come in. Let him. You know, after all, this is a business office. It is not. Not when you're here, darling. But I did come here to see you on business. Uh, who, uh, me? Yes. You're the only one I can trust to help me. Because I think you're the smartest member of this firm. Uh, would you mind telling your father that, Gwen? Well, he knows that. Now, what I'm going to tell you is a secret, and no one must know that I've talked with you. Mm -hmm. You see, you and I are going to be partners. Oh, great. That's wonderful. Business partners. Now, wait until I show you. Do you see that? Uh, there's money, isn't it? Yes. 
Ten $1,000 bills. One. Yeah, don't count them. Don't count them. We're partners. <laughs> Just come over into my office, will you? <laughs> and don't drop any of those things on the way over. All right, I will. Well, and now, little partner, what can I do for you? Bob, I'm terribly worried. Well, how can anyone possibly worry with $10,000? It's not enough. So I want you to invest it for me, because I must make a lot of money quickly. And I think speculation is the best way, don't you? Oh, yes, it is, dear, if you win. I must win. I can't lose because it's not my money. Not your money. Whose money is it? Everybody's. You see, I'm treasurer of a committee which is to raise money enough to build an addition to the orphanage. Well, you have $10,000. Isn't that enough? Why invest it? Because we've got to have $40,000. 40? Yes. And father told me if I raised 20000 in five days, he'd double it. Your father said he'd double it? Yes, and any amount over 20000 But I must do it in five days. Oh, well, that's why he said he'd double it. In five days, Gwen, it can't be done. It must be done. I can't fail now. It would be terrible to return this money. Well, maybe if I invest it for you, you won't have to return it. Bob. I'm not asking much. You'll only have to double it, that's all. That's all? Yes, that's all. I heard you, dear. That's all. Double it. Of course, Bob. There is one terrible aspect to it. Which one is that? Well, it's not our money. And if it's lost, we'll have to replace it out of our own pockets. Uh, uh, out of our own pockets? Yes. Huh. Well, that is a point to consider, you know. Uh, you know, darling, you might not care to incur that risk. Oh, but if you invest it, there is no risk. You're too smart to lose. And you must win, Bob, for my sake. Gwen, if I win this money, will you let me speak to your father about us? Yes. Oh, Gwen. Oh, here. Here, you better take this money before I lose it. I've worried enough about it. Yeah, give it to me and let me worry. <laughs> That's a lot of money to carry around, you know. Uh, I never do. <laughs> uh, I, I hate to muss it up. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, there, 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 there's one way of doubling it. Oh, Bob. Oh, I can double it that way. <laughs> double it again. <laughs> and, uh, mm, uh, there, I, I think it looks very good there, don't uh -huh. you? Oh, don't get it mixed up with your money. Oh, I won't. <laughs> If I ever see it with my money, Gwen, I'll recognize it. Uh, well, uh, now I must be going. Gotta go? Yes. Mm. Gwen. Don't forget now, you must double that money in five days. Five days. And no one must know about it. No one. Oh, Bob. You don't realize how happy you've made me. Fellas, I've got to get on the job. This quicksilver stock can be sold if you only go about it in the right way. I've just phoned J.P. Clark, and when he calls me back, I'll guarantee you I'll sell him a thousand shares. When you can sell J.P. Clark, you can sell anyone. Get me out of that, Marshal. Yes. I'll show you how to sell quicksilver. Oh, hello. Hello, Marshal. Hey, Marshal, my daughter's coming over to see you about a donation for some charity. I'd agree to double any amount that she raises over twenty thousand. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. But uh, when she gets to you, you explain to her that you can't donate anything now. Yeah, I don't want to get stuck on that promise. <laughs> ah, well, that's fine. And now listen, Marshal. I'm going to make some money for you. 
I have a stock that is absolutely A1. Quicksilver. Bound with Lance, you'll double your money in a few days. It's uh, $3 a share, and I figured your allotment at uh, 5,000 shares. Fine. No, 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 don't thank me. Yes, yeah, well, goodbye. Goodbye. That's the way to sell it. Tell them about it. Yeah, tell them about it. Tell them? <laughs> but you didn't tell them the truth. You told him it was a great stock. Well, I hope it is. I've told many a lie that's come true, and in business, you've got to lie. Oh, I don't agree with you, E.M. I think a businessman can get along just as well by telling the absolute truth. You mean about everything? About everything. All the time? All the time. Uh, you're crazy. <laughs> you couldn't tell the truth for 24 hours. Has he been lying again? Barber shop, eh? Well, I've just been trying to convince Bob that he couldn't tell the truth, the absolute truth, for 24 hours and retain any friends or do any business. I still think I could tell the truth indefinitely. Do you mean to say that you could answer every question truthfully, no matter what it was? You, Bob Bennett? When I was nine years old, I told my mother the truth about something that happened at school. What happened at home cured me. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you can no more live without lying than you can do business without deception. It's the way we're brought up. Parents tell their children Santa Claus comes down the chimney in a steam heat at flat. <laughs> you meet your friend Brown in the morning and you say, I hope you slept well. That's a lie. You don't care a damn if he never slept. Well, that may be, but that's not the best way nor the I right way. I didn't say it was the best way or the right way. Why, every divorce gives the lie to wealth, our love, honor, and cherish her, forsaking all others, keeping the only on to her so long as ye both shall live. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they all say, I will. But you'd break up the whole party if you said, I think I will. You bet you would. Well, I'm entitled to my opinion. I still think you could tell the truth. Oh, me? No, I know you couldn't. I mean, that I can tell the truth. For how long? Day, a week, a year. Ever try it? No, but... Well, I'd be willing to bet you anything that you couldn't tell the absolute truth for, say, 24 hours. Yeah, I'd bet you on this. <laughs> couldn't tell. Hello, uh, th th this is Bennett. Couldn't tell the truth. Uh, oh, what? Quicksilver. Yeah. Hey, listen, you can't go wrong on that. That's the greatest stock in the market. I'll load up on it. I just bought a hundred shares of it for my father. <laughs> right you are. Say, as I was Bob, saying, Bob, listen, Ian. Bob, wait a minute, now. I know, but listen, I thought your father was dead. He is. Oh. As I, as I was saying, Ian, you don't have to lie in business, and I'd bet you on it. Well, I'll tell you how I feel about it. I'll bet you five, ten, fifteen thousand. Go as far as you like. Oh, <laughs> uh, you, you... Uh, <laughs> You, you mean you'd bet me money, real money, that I couldn't tell the truth for 24 hours? That's what I said. <laughs> the idea of Bob saying that he can tell the truth. Well, just this morning in my office on the phone, he lied about a certain stock. What stock? He said, uh, well, it doesn't matter. This is the easiest way in the world to make money. No expense, no overhead. <laughs> just collect. You can get him in. Well, I'm one a day, that's all I need, you know, <laughs> on a proposition like this. If you do, you've got to let us in. Yeah. You're, if you're really serious about this, I'll just make you a little bet that I can tell the truth for 24 hours. How much is it? I'll bet you $10,000. How much? <coughs> Ten, $10,000. You mean that? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> yes, sir. He's bluffing. Where's your 10000 I got it. I got it. Where? Well, I'll, have it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Now, let's Where? get this straight so we'll have no argument about it afterwards. You say you're willing to bet $10,000 that you can tell the truth, the absolute truth, for 24 hours? Yes. All right, I'll take it. Uh, uh, I'll bet you ten thousand dollars you can't tell the absolute truth for twenty-four hours. Yes, and I'll bet you five thousand more. No, no, I only want to bet ten thousand. I've got to have some of this. You expect me to give up a cinch bet? Did you give up any part of the bet you were sure of winning? Sure. Uh, I... Neither will I. <laughs> <laughs> ten thousand. Uh, you're not going away, are you? Uh, no, I only want to rest. Say, look here, Governor. You've got to divide it between us. I want five thousand. Well, now I'll ask him if he'll spend it three ways. What? Do you mind if you split this bet three ways? I don't care how you split it, so long as I get my 10,000. So long, 10,000 is right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you two fellas make out your checks for 3,000 apiece. I'll take four. All right, Governor. Uh, 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 hey, Ian. Uh, never mind, never mind. Now we'll settle this. Well, I know, but there's... What are you going to do, back out? No, I'm not. There's <laughs> one born every minute. <laughs> well, let's get down the turn. Yeah. You agree to tell the unadulterated truth for 24 hours? Yes, yes. He won't live 24 hours, however. Oh, uh, just a minute. There's a little condition I'd like to put in there. Now, you can't uh, run away and hide or shut yourself up where you won't see anyone. Yes. What? 
No, no, no. You must go on in the even tenor of your way. Just put down the even tenor of his way and write tenor with a capital T. <laughs> yeah, well, well, wait. Put in this condition, that if anybody tells of this bet or hints of it, that side loses. One lose, all lose on your side. Now, put that in. Put it in. Put it in. Put in his picture if he wants it. <laughs> All right, where are your checks? Fox exactly as if he expected to win. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's going to be the stakeholder? Ah, oh, I know who will want to be stakeholder, but he won't. We're going to put these in an envelope and put the envelope in the safe. We can trust the safe. Yes. yes. I suppose so. Well, now then, where's your money? I want to count it. There's only 9,000 here. 9,000? What, what are you... What's the matter with you? Don't drum. Don't drum. Understand the condition. Yeah. yeah. Absolute truth for 24 hours. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right, it's just two minutes to four. Five minutes to four. It's three minutes to four. The right time is five minutes after four. We're all wrong. The right time is four o'clock. I set your watches, boys. Well, then are we all set? Yeah. That's exactly four o'clock. The bed is on. Go. Now, what will I ask? Just a minute. I saw him first. I want to ask this baby a question. You told me you earned 40000 last year. Did you? No. How much did you earn? Uh, 5300 5300 And where did you get the 10000 Oh, I got it. I got it. I asked I got you it. where you got it. I don't think I have to answer that. You certainly do have to answer that question. Even tenor. Well, certainly he's got away. We can't get away with anything like that. Hello. 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 Clark? Oh, J.P. Clark? How are you, Mr. Clark? This is Bennett. <laughs> Quicksilver? It's no good. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. It's worth it. What? What's that? You ruined me. You ruined me. What did you tell him that for? Did you hear what he said? That's the truth. <laughs> well, gentlemen, the bet is on. It started today at 4 o'clock. It terminates tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Well, so long, gentlemen. I'll see you tomorrow at five minutes to four. No, 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 you no, 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 you don't. You're going home with me and stay tonight. Tonight? I, uh, I don't... I can't. I don't want to go. You've got the even tenor of your way, and you've never refused before. And we'll go with you. You bet your sweet life we will. Got a few questions I want to ask this, baby. Go ahead. Now, I'll hold him here. You call a taxi. I think, he says. That'll do us a lot of good tomorrow. Well, I'll call Mr. Smith. Oh, no, you don't. I know who you are. I saw your picture too many times in the paper. You're Mr. 
by telling that motorcycle cop I was going 65 miles an hour, and me without a driver's license. Well, the truth is the truth. Well, he didn't tell him that I had a couple of drinks. Well, he didn't ask me that. Mm. Oh, shut up. Hey, Mr. Burke, what's going to happen to us? Yeah. Well, I'm awfully sorry, girls, but in the excitement, my chauffeur disappeared, but uh, I'll see that you're driven home at once. Well, that's all right. We're used to being out late at night. Well, I know, but I'm not used to this sort of thing. Uh, 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 ben. Uh, Will you drive these two young ladies home? No. I'm going to stay here and watch Ben. I take them home, Governor, but I can't drive a car. Why, I'd be only too glad to drive the girls wherever they want to go. Oh, oh no, you don't. Right, right, right. right. Where you are. Oh. <clears throat> hey, haven't you any respect for people's lives? Not with you. You're the rottenest driver I ever rode with. Oh, baloney. Hi, up from here. Baloney, baloney. It's like a lie to me. Well, you tell me. Well, 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 thank you, Father. Well, 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 I was, uh, I was, uh, Never mind about that. I'll settle with you tomorrow. But meanwhile, there's a couple of young ladies here I want you to drive wherever they want to go. Yes, sir. I, I, I must apologize, girls, for taking you so far out of your way, but uh, I'll say good night. Good night. Yeah, but what about the show, Mr. Burke? Well, I will talk about that some other time. Uh, good night, good night. Uh, come on, boys. Good night, ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I don't like the way he says that. Right this way, then. Hey, step right here. in. Right Think in. For a couple of dumbbells. Huh? The boss's orders whether I should take you home. Will you keep your shirt off? <laughs> step right inside. Hey, will you go take a nap someplace?
have a delightful voice, Miss Clark, don't you, Bob? Uh, what? I said, don't you think Miss Clark has a delightful voice? Uh, well, I'm not much of a judge. Well, I guess Robert, you're a very good judge. Oh. I guess he's an excellent judge of music. Uh, Mom, tell us truthfully, what do you think of her voice? Well, uh, I think the same as you think. Never mind what I think. Truthfully, what do you think of her voice? I think it's terrible. Robert! Oh, don't cry, Ethel. Please don't cry, dear. But you don't understand. You see, you didn't allow Robert to finish what he intended to say. He thinks it's terrible that you should waste your voice on that song. That's what he meant to say, dear. I hope so. There, now, darling. Won't you play and sing something else for us? No, I don't think I'd better. I must be going right. Oh, my dear, please don't spoil your visit because of a little misunderstanding. Uh, Bob, you're sorry if you said anything to hurt Miss Clark, aren't you? Indeed I am. Miss Clark, you can't dream. You can't imagine how terribly sorry I am if I've offended you. Won't you please forgive me? There, now, isn't that nice? You see, we never can tell how things are going to sound. And we should weigh everything carefully before we speak. I do. Now, we'll all forget that anything happens. <laughs> I'm so quick to take things to myself. Oh, my dear, we all do that. But now, everything's all right, isn't it? Perfect. <laughs> and you really don't have to go? Well, perhaps I can stay. Oh, oh how nice. Robert, Miss Clark hasn't seen our garden this summer. Will you show her about? Why, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Oh, what a pretty dress, my dear. Turn around. Oh, it is a pretty dress, isn't it, Frank? Oh, stunning. Don't you think so, Robert? <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad it's a pretty dress. <laughs> I must admit, I don't care much about the dress. I simply adore the hat. Oh, it's adorable, my dear. Oh, it's a beauty. Ask Bob. Do you like it, Mr. Bennett? Uh, sir, turn around so I can see the front. This is the front. I'll make you tell her the truth. How do you like her hat? I think it's awful. Robert Bennett, have you gone crazy? Oh, dear. Don't cry. Please, oh, dear. Oh, I'll explain it all. Please. I've got a good mind to kill you. Uh, is that so? Well, listen. I'm going to make you tell a lie. It's the last thing I do. Well, it will be the last thing you will do. Oh. so long and not have to walk home. Maybe we were last. Mother says you insulted Ethel. I can't believe it. Did you? Twice. But why? I had to. You had to? Yeah, I had to tell the truth. But there's no reason for hurting people's feelings. There are such things as white lies. I know, but they're not in the conditions. Conditions? What conditions? I mean, Gwen, that there's no such thing as a conditional truth. The truth is the truth. 
But the truth very often gets us into trouble. Didn't you know that? <laughs> I know it now. Bob, why didn't you go into business today? Uh, your father wanted me to stay down here. And Frank? Uh, he wanted him around here, too. Is it a holiday? Not for me. Well, then why are you here? Well, your dad thought it'd be safer. Safer? Uh, yes. Something strange about you. I know it, Gwen. I know it. Oh, Gwen, 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 I've had a terrible day. And an awful night, too. You know, I haven't slept a wink all, no all night. Oh, Bob. Weren't you tired? Oh, I was frightfully tired, but... Our father and Frank and Van Dyke kept me awake all night asking me questions. About business? About everything. Bob, is there anything wrong with the firm? And there's a lot wrong with two members of that firm. I'm all right, though. Are you worried about business? Well, it's not exactly business. Now, Bob, I didn't intend to ask you about my ten thousand dollars. Oh, Linda, well, Gwen, I don't, don't, honey, don't tell oh, but the Bob, I think you should be in the city watching it. When did you see it last? No, what, what, Gwen? What? Didn't you hear what I said? Uh, yeah, yeah, I... Well, then, when did you see my money last? Uh, yeah, yesterday. Where was that? In the office. Well, what did you do with it? Well, they put it in an envelope. What did you do with the envelope? Well, uh, they sealed it up. <laughs> oh, then you didn't invest it? Yeah, I invested it, Gwen. Oh, have you, have you won, Bob? No. Well, you haven't lost, have you? Not yet. Not yet, Bob. What do you mean? I haven't lost it. Well, honestly, I haven't. Oh, Bob, how you... Spring to spring. Birds that sing in the spring. Is there anything I can do for you? No. There's something I'd like to do to you. <laughs> spring to spring. Birds that sing in the spring. You're not as sure that you'll win as you were, are you? I'll win, Gwen. I'll win for you. Ah, uh, can you imagine what a dreadful thing it would be if we lost the 10,000? Don't worry, Gwen. You'll know all about it at 4 o'clock. But I thought the market closed at 3. Well, this one's going to stay open until 4. Bob, as soon as we get the money, I'll give it right back and let you double it again. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> well, do you mean this was an exceptional opportunity? Very. In fact, I don't think it'll ever happen again. It won't in my life, I know. Oh, please try not to say things to people that'll hurt their feelings. When after today, I'll never tell the truth to anyone. Mark my word on that. Oh, yes, Bob. I want you always to tell the truth to me about everything. Well, you, you might not like to hear it. Yes, I would. I insist that you tell me the truth about myself. Well, Gwen. I think you're the most wonderful girl in the world. I love you more than anything or anybody. And Gwen, I want you to be my wife. Bob. Oh. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could stay like this until four o'clock? the lion tamer. Well, I'm glad you confessed the truth to me. So am I. Let's, let's forget and forgive. Yeah. Let's forget and forgive.
Yeah? You never kissed anyone else. Did you? Mm. Did you? Yeah. Oh, whom, Bob? Uh, the cannonball talker. Why didn't you tell me this before? I didn't have to. You didn't have to? I mean... Oh, Bob. Uh, uh, Gwen, I thought you were going to forgive and forget. Oh, Gwen. Well, well I will, but... Oh. But you can't blame me for being a little... A little... Bob. Yeah? Will you always be true to me? I think I will. You think you will? No. Why, Bob? Yes, yes. yes. What I mean, do you mean, Bob? I don't know what I mean. When I'm so, I'm so rattled, I don't know what I mean, really. I'm, I think I'm... Well, I just left Ethel in the garden crying her eyes out, Robert. Her people are the richest in our summer colony, and you insult a daughter in my house. Really, Mrs. Burke, what did you think of Ethel's voice? Well, I think it's terrible myself. But you can't go around telling people that. And what you said to the cook about the fish? Well, now she's gone. Do you imagine people like to hear the truth about themselves, unless it happens to be pleasant? Well, I thought I could do it. Well, you can't do it in my house. I, I'm sorry you came here. Oh, my. What? Why, oh, I beg you for Well, I should think you would. Please, excuse me. That would be easier for me than you imagine. Come, Gwen. Oh, Bob, do be careful. You bet I will. Uh, uh, I love this clock. Bob. Yeah? I'm so sorry to have asked you all those questions. But there's so many things a girl wants to know about the man she's going to marry. There, there aren't any more questions, are there? Not now, but I'll see you later. <laughs> Van Dyke. Do you want to hide? I want to, but I'm not going to. Now listen, now, this thing is getting serious. <laughs> You've got about two hours left. Will you give in? No, I won't. Hey, do you want me to lose that part of that <laughs> 10,000? I'd love it. Oh. I'd love it. Oh, there you are, eh? I've been looking all over for you. I want to ask you a few questions. Well, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about that. Right here. I've been waiting a long time to get a line on you, and now is my opportunity. Now, did you ever steal anything? Yes. What did you steal? I stole some money. Where did you steal it? From a bank. How much was it? Half a dollar. So you stole a half a dollar from a bank, eh? Yeah. What bank was it? My little brother's bank. You stole a half a dollar from your little brother's bank. Well, it's all he had in there. Well, you ever get drunk? Yeah, oh, uh, one night. Were you ever arrested? Yeah. When? The same night. Just a minute. Did you, uh, did you, uh... Did you ever kill anybody? No, but I think I'm going to. Why not? You bet you do. Frank, you keep your eye on them. I'll be right back. Hey, you know the DM's lady friends are still here? They've been in the garage all night. Mabel, come here. What's that all about? We've got to do something to get rid of them. Well, say, it isn't my fault that they're here. V.M. hadn't said to Mabel that he talked to her later about back in the show. They wouldn't have insisted upon coming out here with us last night. Mabel? Show? Did I understand you to say my husband is thinking of backing some woman in a show? We weren't talking about your husband. I heard you say E.M. You must have been mistaken. He was speaking of a man named Emmons. 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 Robert. 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 Are they speaking about my 
my husband? I have a... Well? I have a... Answer me. Answer me. Yep. Now what have you to say? Emma's my story and I'm stuck with it. A pretty state of affairs. And who is Mabel? Mabel? Mabel. I don't know. Oh. Dan, it's too late for you to try to shield my husband. Oh, Mrs. Burke, you're oh. mistaken. You see, the whole incident so trivial, so unexpected. Trivial, yes, most unexpected, I assure you. So unexpected that I'm going to get to the bottom of this. My husband put it back a woman in a show of surprise. Now, we've got to get them out of here. If Mrs. Burke sees them, Kurt, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to see that they start back to town at once. Is that so? Say, what's the idea of keeping walking up and down your eyebrows? Hello, nothing. What we want is five minutes of cue. Oh, I didn't know we had company. Oh, uh, uh, Mrs. Burke, allow me to uh, present the rival twins. Mrs. Burke, Mrs. E. M. Burke. Charmed, I'm sure. Come in, young ladies. No, no, my, my sister and I were just passing through. Uh, thank you, yes. I, I think we'd really better be going. Uh, don't you, Mabel? Mabel? Oh, Robert, Robert. That's the Mabel. Right, and I see it, sir. Anthony. Well, Anthony. That's Mabel. Uh, well, uh, I, I think I'll show the young ladies around the place. Oh, no. I'll show the young ladies around the place. So you just wanted a little visit with Mr. Burke. in for it? Why do you say we? Well, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. It'll serve E.M. right. You'll all get what's coming to you for taking me to that nightclub. Nightclub? Well, I'll give you a nightclub. You shouldn't have gone there. Don't. Oh. You want my wife to get on? No, no, no. You don't want my wife to get on. Oh, of course not. Do we, Bob? Well, she's already on. What? Mabel and Sable are here to see their financier. Good Lord. My wife has seen them? She's entertaining them now. How did they get here? Except in the garage. I went. Those that I know them. If I know, there's no telling what she knows. You fired me of coming to my home? I know that Mr. Burton said you'd see stop back in our show later. Where is my wife? Oh, we just left her. What? Oh, yes, she found out that my name was Mabel. But who told her that she was coming back to our show? Tell her. I did not. But who did? She did. Well, she heard me talking to Van about it. Is that all you got to talk about? What did you tell her?
Where's the 200? Oh, I understand. If you'll pardon me, I'll get the money right away. Excuse me. unless you tell me something that's worth it. Now, you've known my husband how long? Well, at least three months, haven't you? Oh, admit it. Well, uh, Mrs. Burke, I, I tell you... Come on, admit it. Admit it. All right, I admit it. I admit it. Well, why didn't you tell me the truth at once? Oh, you'll say nothing by lying. I have $200 here, but you'll not get a penny unless you tell me what I want to know. Now, tell me the worst. Go on, tell her the worst. best friend is his mother, is his mother. We 
Had him in the bag, and you let him out. This is my friend. Where have you been? I've been looking for Bob. Now, where is George Washington? I don't know. Well, go and find him. Don't come back without him. Search everywhere. In the gardens. Drag the pond. Get in the pond. Don't drag it. Drug it. Ah, so there you are. Come oh, in here. I've been looking for you. I want to have a talk with you. I have ruined my business, wrecked my home. At least you tell my wife that Mabel wasn't telling the truth. Well, I think I can say Mabel exaggerated a bit. Exaggerated? You tell Mrs. Burke that I don't know Mabel at all. I won't tell a lie. You'll set my wife against me rather than lose. Hey, I'm very sorry, but I've got to win. All right, that's second. Well, it's gone far enough. The bet is called off. Cancel. Now, you tell my wife what I want you to? Do you mean I win? No, 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 it's just called off. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You think that after I've answered every crazy question you could think of for 24 hours, that I'm going to let you call off this bet? <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> Will you take a furlough? No, I won't take a furlough. Even if I knew what it was, I wouldn't take it. You laughed at me when we made the bet. You pitied me. I didn't think you'd sacrifice your friends and everything to win. Well, you didn't mind sacrificing me. Well, what will you take to stop now? I won't bargain. I'm going to win the bet legitimately. I'll give you... You won't give me anything, Em. Now listen to me. Won't you help me with Mrs. Burke? No. You... Embrace. I'll just solve our partnership. I don't blame you, Em. All right. All right. If it's necessary for me to lie, in order to remain your partner, I might as well know it now. Besides, my self-respect is worth more to me than your opinion. Now listen. Not only yes. that, I feel better... Do all the worrying. Well, I'm worried enough, but what can we do? Say, this thing is getting down close, and I've got to protect my money. You two birds sit around here like a couple of stuffed ducks. You haven't got an idea between you. But I suppose you have. You make Bob line? Yes. How? Frame him. How can we do that? We've got to catch him off his guard. Who can do it? When? When? How can she do it? He's more liable to lower his guard to her, isn't he? Yes. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't get you. What do you mean? I'll be patient. Now, Gwen knows that mistake of Mabel's. We'll call it a mistake. You know it's a mistake. All right, we know it's a mistake. Yeah. It's made her mother very unhappy. Now, she doesn't know what it's all about, but that's what she's got to ask Bob. Well, what do you think he'll tell her? That depends on what she asks and how she asks it. Why, well, certainly I can see that. Oh, what are those two girls doing here? It's breaking my heart to see Mother so unhappy. That sort of stuff, huh? That's it. Tell me, please tell me my father never met them. If he's got one spark of manhood left, he lie like a gentleman. Any man would. Yes, I think even he would. It's a mean advantage to take him, but it's better than letting him win. The only way he can win is over my dead body. Now, uh, who will coach when? I will. A great idea, Van. A great idea. Why didn't we think of this before? <laughs> We've never heard the last of this if he won. Go and find Bob. All right, now, uh, are we all going to listen? Yes. Yeah, certainly we don't want to have any argument. I'll be right up here. All right, I'll find Bob and be right out there. Oh, Mr. Conley, where's Gwen? Well, she's not here now. Bob sent me over these checks for Gwen. What are they? Just a moment till I get my breath. When I got home, I found a lot of men there. They were having such a time, laughing uproariously. What about? You'll have to let me tell it my way. It's so important. It seems that Mr. Burke... Where was I? Oh, yes. It seems that Mr. Burke tried to sell something to Father and the other gentleman. And when he had they'd offer to double Gwen's charity money, you don't mind my saying this, do you? No, no, come on. Well, Mr. Marshall said, oh, but nothing. Offering to double a prohibited sum. Now's our chance to catch him. And they all know it's a worthy charity. Here are Father, Mr. Marshall, Mr. Element, and Mr. Carter. $10,000 each. $40,000. And with Gwen's 10000 it makes a grand total of 50000 for him to double. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Burke, did you hear the glad tidings? Oh, yes, I heard the glad tidings. Oh, Mr. Burke, isn't it marvelous? They decided to call the home by your name, yeah. the Burke Home. I'll probably have to go there to live. Oh, if Mr. Burke had a home, I was going to buy it. Fifty thousand dollars. I'm the one that always has to pay. But I'll make Bob lose this bet, and I'll save that much anyway. Now, come on now, let's take Van's advice and frame him. I, I hate to do it, it's against my principles, but it's the only way out. Go and find Bob. All right. 
Now then, we've got to catch them red-handed, and we mustn't miss a word of this. I'll be right out there. There's when. When? Oh, Mr. Van Dyke. I've been waiting here to see Bob. I've been talking to your mother and father. Your mother's upstairs. She's tired, I fancy. Yes, I'm afraid she is. Too bad. You seem worried about something. Oh, no, Mr. Van Dyke. Oh, yes. I don't want to intrude in a personal matter, but those young ladies came here to see Mr. Conway. They're not friends of Bob, as you think. I didn't think they were friends of Bob. I was under the impression they were Mr. Conway's friends. Oh, oh possibly father. Your father doesn't know them, never met them. Are you sure? You ask Bob, he'll tell you all about them. I intend to. Tell him how upset you are. Make him reassure you. There's no reason you should be troubled about a small affair of this kind. If I were you... Here comes Bob now. Ask him. Why, how do you do, Robert? I'd like to speak to you for a moment, Bob. Well, uh, the flowers need a little water. I better get a little, I think, don't you? You can take care of them later. Might die. That's the only thing. Sit down, Bob. No, here. Oh. Bob, do you really love me? Why, you know I do, Gwen. Now, Bob, I'm not going to have the other men in this house come to me and offer me their sympathy while you avoid me. It's your duty to explain everything to me. Gwen, if you'll only wait a little while, I can explain everything so easily. Why will it be any easier then than now? Well, later, uh, my, my, my mind will work better. Oh, I think you can tell me the truth now just as well as later. Is it any easier to tell the truth on one day than on another? Oh, very much. <laughs> what? Well, you haven't any idea, Gwen. But now, no matter what happens, remember, everything I'm doing, I'm doing for you. Now, Bob, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but I don't see what you're doing for me. Now, those girls... Oh, now, please, please, well... Oh, Bob, you don't enjoy seeing me worry, do you? Well, that would make me terribly miserable. I couldn't stand to see you worry. Oh, dear, tell me what I want to hear. Swear to me that my father never saw either of those two girls. That will convince me, and I'll be happy. Well, if I tell you that I never saw your father with either of those girls, will that make you happy? Yes, Bob. Well, Gwen? Gwen? Well, why do you hesitate? Did you ever see my father with either of those two girls? Yep, I have. Where? Uh, in the garage. When? Uh, uh, write me a letter about it, Gwen. Just a moment. When you saw my father with those two girls, what was he doing? Uh, just talking. Just talking? Uh, you know, there's a chain of Tiffany's that is a police... Just a moment, Bob. What else did you see? Oh, I saw a tire and a hammer and a monkey oh, wrench. Bob, when you saw my father with those two girls, what was he doing? Uh, he was falling out the chauffeur. Why, he never does that. I know, but that's what was so funny. It was the funniest time. Bob Bennett, I think you're lying to me. Don't say that, please. No, not, not so loud, anyway. Mr. Van Dyke just told me Father had never met them. Van Dyke did? Yes. Well, Van Dyke is a liar. Oh, he is, is he? But when? Well, I believe him. Oh, well, no. I did it all for you. Oh. I'd much rather you spent your time telling the truth for me. You, you, you get out of there, leave my house. Uh, I divorce you. I, I mean, I dissolve you. You're no longer my father. If you want to quarrel with your own bread and butter, that's not my affair. But you talk too much. You should listen twice as much as you talk. That's why you were given two ears and only one mouth. That was the psychological moment of settled everything. Now, where are we? In the stretch. Mr. Bennett, I find that we have more charity money than we need. 
kind of return my $10,000. You don't have to double it. $10,000? What $10,000? I gave him $10,000 to invest yesterday. You, you gave him $10,000 to invest for you yesterday? Do you know anything about it? Oh, I know anything about it. I... No, no, I... Well, ask him what he did with your $10,000. Go on, my child, I'm your father. If you love me, ask him what he did with your $10,000. Tell me, Bob, what did you do with my money? I can't tell you. You not only can, but you must. Now, come on, tell her the truth. What did you do with her $10,000? Tell her, tell her. Tell me, Bob, what did you do with my $10,000? Answer her, answer her. Do, do, do you really want to know? I must know. Tell her, tell, tell her. Did you want her to know yes. what I did with her $10,000? Yes. And, of course, you want her to know what I did with her $10,000. Yes. And you want her to yes, know what I did yes, with her $10,000? Yes, yes, yes. Well, if you really want to know what I did with the $10,000, ask your father. No, 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 don't ask me. I don't know. Ask Ben. I don't know. Ask I don't know anything about Bob, it. I insist that you tell me the truth. Uh, no evasions. Bob, if you don't tell me what you did with my money, I'll break off our engagement. Well, you don't mean that. I do. Uh, tell, tell her. her. Tell her. Oh, well, all right. If you could only cook. <laughs> well, well, I won. I won. Now that you won, will you tell her what you did with the ten thousand dollars? Why, young uh, when, when we had a bet, uh, uh, you're too anxious. You may have been up to that clock again. No, it's all right. It's all right. It's after four o'clock. Western Union. When, when don't act like that. Why, what I said about your father wasn't true. No, he never met those girls, did you? Mrs. Burke, has been a terrible mistake. Your husband never met those girls. Ask me if you ever met those girls. Did I ever meet those girls? I know he never met those girls. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Boys, isn't that a beautiful hat? I suppose so. Like it, Mr. Bennett. Ethel, will you do me a great favor? Will you sing something for me? Father! Anything but that string song. Go ahead, darling. Ask me anything. Anything. 